Britain's skies have never been busier. Every day, 8,000 planes are flying over 3 million passengers. And in the UK's £52 billion airline business, EasyJet is the leader by flying more passengers than any of its competitors. Now, for the first time, is that my best side? with unprecedented access to the pilots, you have a banana sandwich. A what? Delicious. And their cockpits. <laughs> we'll show you an airline like it's never been seen before. Okay. So, yeah. And this year, EasyJet planned to fly to even more destinations with more passengers. What do you expect a pilot to look like? Yeah. Old and haggard. So they're taking to the skies with hundreds of new pilots. Haven't smacked it into the ground. You will. And what's more, the final stage of their training is on the job. It looks so much bigger when you see it. And we're coming along for the sometimes bumpy ride. So let's buckle up with the captains and the wannabe co-pilots, some of whom could be flying you to your favorite holiday destination a lot sooner than you think. Paris, home to Charles de Gaulle Airport. After London's Heathrow, this is Europe's second busiest airport, with 1,200 flights taking off and landing here every day. And out of the 59 airlines that are based here, the second most popular is EasyJet. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome you to EasyJet flight V805 to Prague. This year, they're on their biggest pilot recruitment drive ever. Come to Deborah Monty on National 650, Easy 365 shot down, so good day. One of the 300 rookies that's graduated from the class of 2017 is 20-year-old Ryan Clyde. Good, so here you just have to ask for pushback, okay. and then it will give you a direction and the color of the line that wants to push back. Okay. Today, he's at the controls of his first flight with Euro-paying passengers. Ryan, is there any questions, anything you'd like to talk about before we go? No, I think I'm good. Any threats you can think of? <laughs> Me? <laughs> yes. Training captain Bert Hauerhaus will be keeping Ryan out of harm's way. Can you see just over the cowling when yeah. you're in the position? Yeah. OK. Just a week ago, Ryan swapped his home in the green hills of Cumbria for the chic streets of Paris. Despite being in the gastronomic capital of Europe, he's already missing some home comforts. Bread. I'm crumpets. Oh, well, I need a basket. Ryan has been posted to Paris Charles de Gaulle, one of EasyJet's 28 European bases. Like all rookies, he could be away from the UK for two years, flying up to 16 flights every week. It's very different, and people are. There's a lot of things that are very French. Today is a big day for our boy from Blighty. Nerves on a scale of 1 to 10. Probably four or five. I think you've just got to be positive, ultimately. Enjoy it as well. I mean, I'm just trying to focus on the excitement. Like, I'm flying passengers for the first time. It's, it's cool. Luckily for Ryan and EasyJet, he lives just 20 minutes from Charles de Gaulle Airport. I drive on the right. Drive on the right. Drive. Already well out of his comfort zone, he now has the small matter of making his debut commercial flight. Today on the outbound flight, Captain Bert flew to Prague, whilst Ryan was in charge of talking to air traffic control. Ryan is now flying the plane back into Paris Charles de Gaulle, which means he'll be landing, for the first time, completely unbeknown to his passengers. I went through security at the goal the other day and they were like, oh my god, you're dead at birth. I was like, yeah, 96. <laughs> Spice Girls, <laughs> that time. <laughs> but yeah. Don't worry, give it a couple of years with all the flying that we do, you'll be like, oh. yeah, the grey hair's already coming through, it's not good. <laughs> Let's get on Tinder quick while I look good. <laughs> when that door closes, it's just kind of you and the captain, and it's just you two in the aircraft, and you do kind of forget that there's 186 paying people sat behind you. It's just mad. But uh, you can't dwell on that. 
In less than 30 minutes, Ryan will have to land this Airbus A320 at one of the most congested airports in the world. I'll start descending us Early. very soon, yeah. To make it even harder, it'll be in the dark. Any questions? Don't hesitate to ask. Okay. What is the meaning of life? <laughs> <laughs> With lots of black coffee, we can discuss that. <laughs> 29 Although there's radar on board to detect other planes, the cockpit has to be as dark as possible. So in an emergency, Ryan's eyes are adjusted to the low light. It's more about the landing. For the landing, we can feel it in our body. So we don't want the landing to be too harsh. Just two weeks ago, on his first and only training flight, the captain was forced to take control and abort the landing altogether. A Toga 10 in pilot speak. An aborted landing with passengers could be frightening, especially for one traveler. It's my first flight. First flight ever? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> How are you feeling? A little bit scared. <laughs> She's afraid of our landing. EZY3806 has started its descent into Charles de Gaulle. OK, I'm like flap three. Speed checks. Flap three. Which at this time of the evening has a plane landing every 30 seconds. Passengers are paying my wages and, and keeping the airline going. And, and yeah, the impacts of a, a, a bit of a firm landing on a nervous fire might be that they never choose to fly this shit again, which is a big deal. With reduced visibility at night, pilots are almost entirely reliant on the instruments in front of them. Well, do you see the touchdown point where we're going to aim to touch down? Yeah. OK. After successfully landing, it's Ryan's first hero moment, saying goodbye to his grateful passengers. Luckily for them, Ryan didn't have this chat when they boarded. When you tell people the 20, it's kind of a mix between disbelief and kind of like, oh, wow, you, you know, you've achieved all this at 20. And uh, that makes me feel quite proud, actually, when, when people kind of recognize that. And yeah, yeah, I, I have, yeah, I'm 20 and I fly planes. <laughs> Here at EasyJet's training hub at Gatwick is where Ryan first stepped into the cockpit of an Airbus, albeit without passengers. And today, a new bunch of nervous trainees are about to follow in Ryan's footsteps. You can come in a little closer. <laughs> it's not a rifle range. <laughs> With the airline's drive to take on 300 new pilots this year, it's another day at the sharp end of EasyJet's training machine for ex-RAF captain Chris Kingswood. This is one of those milestone days for you, OK? This is the day you actually fly that big old jet. Each trainee has to land and take off six times without stopping in a manoeuvre called touch-and-go landings. We've got Christian as a safe pilot. Uh, James is a base trainer. He's one of these incredibly annoying, young and talented people. For any point during today, you hear James or myself say, I have control, relinquish control, say you have control, so we know you've heard us. It's up to training captains Chris and James to decide whether the rookies are safe to fly passengers. If they fail, they'll send them back to the classroom. 
there will inevitably be things that don't go well for them as well as they'd hoped. And, and, and a huge part of our job is to keep them calm, keep them relaxed, and just to keep them engaged. I mean, it's, it's great to have fun, but the minute you add stress and pressure, everything becomes a bit difficult. There are 800 flights in and out of Gatwick every day. So when you're about to fly a 70-ton jet for the first time, it's better for the trainees and everyone else to practice out of Gatwick's airspace. Look at the beast. <laughs> the beast, AKA the Airbus, is the most common passenger jet flown in the world, with one taking off every two seconds. Right, chaps, so you're gathering. Captain Chris left the Air Force in 1996. However, he still likes to run things with military precision. There are very few things that aren't acceptable. But a land madras in the tech log is not acceptable to me. Uh, <laughs> would you do the honours, darling? <laughs> There's a wiper for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to a bad place, James. <laughs> Captain Chris gets a chance to show off his decades of flying experience sitting beside First Officer Christian. They're taking the rookie pilots to a less congested airport, 700 miles away in the south of France. It's all checked. Wunderbar. Wunderbar. I don't know why I keep saying that. <laughs> so in a gym, it's coming out. We don't need to talk about that. <laughs> Fair enough. We can retract the landing lights, please, Christian. Don't have much use for them at the minute. Landing lights go. Thank you very much. That's the end of Blighty. Yep. So we're going to skirt just to the south of Paris. I was based there for four years. All the Charles de Gaulle. Oh, uh, de Gaulle. De Gaulle. Very happy. It's a nice base. One of today's goals is to get the trainees to land safely on the center of the French runway and then immediately make a smooth takeoff. First in the hot seat under Chris's steely gaze is Tom. Was that a look of horror, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know if I want to. Not a bit that way. He takes his seat but only has a few minutes to get the feel of the controls before he needs to land the plane. When coming into land, the angle of the plane and its speed make the difference between a good or a disastrous touchdown. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard, retard. Captain Chris is forced to take over the controls. Hey, that was all a bit of a flurry, wasn't it, mate? Yeah, it <laughs> Looks like he's got his work cut out. Luton Airport is where it all began for EasyJet back in 1995 with just one plane, one route to Glasgow and ten pilots. Today, EasyJet operate over 270 planes across 886 routes with more than 3,000 pilots. Um, I'll update my roster when I can, so it should. Nice. Valley service. <laughs> All right. See you. Bye. See you later. Ex British Airways pilot Captain Zoe Ebury is on her way to Luton from her home, which, like all EasyJet pilots, must be within a 90 minute commute. Only 3% of pilots are women. It took seven years for her to become a captain. It's an evolution rather than a step change. Um, it's a bit like when you first learn to drive a car, you start off really focusing on the mechanical aspects to widening your view and the blinkers become wider and wider and your view of everything becomes much bigger the more that you do. And it's the same with flying an aeroplane. Zoe is a member of a select club one of only 450 female captains in the world. They could all fit into a single jumbo jet. Today, she will be flying with First Officer Steph Harris, who joined EasyJet as a cadet four years ago. Can we have 4.6 tons, please? Steph is two pay grades behind Captain Zoe, 
and it's her job to order their plane's fuel for their flight, bound for Rome. 41 right and no stop, that's great, thanks very much. Thanks, bye. bye. Zoe's first job of the day is briefing her crew. Morning. Morning, everybody. Including a new cabin member, Shanice. Bless her. Hello. How are, you, how are you finding it? Fine, yeah, it's really good. It's lovely. It's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> we're ready to board as you guys are. You can open the rear door and That'll be fine. <laughs> be fine, just be nice. Passengers don't mind, they'll understand. Morning. Hi there. Right, are you ready for a very quick brief? The chances of having two women pilots in the cockpit at the same time are 300 to 1. Wind today on the runway is from the right, so if you have an engine fire on the right-hand side, it's a more critical turn to put the burning engine downwind, but we'll turn towards the fire. Hi, 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 it's me. Hi, it's Chris, that's Gavin Scott for takeoff. Gavin Scott for takeoff, thank you. Yeah. See you on. Perfect. Steph has 1,865 flying hours under her belt and just needs to reach 2,000 to become a senior first officer. Girl. Increasing her pay packet from 50,000 to over 60,000 pounds a year. But her progression as a pilot could require making some serious sacrifices. How do you feel about having babies? You must like the idea because you've been talking about your being an auntie. Yeah, because it's like with this, I've been flying for two years, qualified for two years, so it's like if I had a child anytime soon, like all that money, all that investment, yeah. I'd have to like take time out and then that'd kind of put the career on hold, so. Well, it definitely does. Yeah. Certainly as a first, having children as a first officer does delay your career somewhat. Yeah, so I think it's good. Because you can't fly, you can't fly, so you can't yeah. gain the experience, so you can't, you know, there's no, there's kind of no way around it, unfortunately. Until, um, until the, the men can have the babies. <laughs> yeah. And their dedication in the cockpit is something Laura and Shanice are very aware of. They're always working and they're really hard, yeah. You always see them when you go and take their cups of tea. Always working, talking to air traffic control. Yeah, they haven't yeah. really got time to mess around no. or joke. Sure. Steph, come on, how did, Give you me meet, how did you meet Alex? I met Alex at the CAA. The CAA. <laughs> what were you doing at the CAA? Having a medical. <laughs> you're having a medical. What, well, the class one, your initial class one? In your robe and everything. <laughs> I'm sure, I don't remember. I didn't think we had robes, but we were dressed. Well, that was, that's nice to know. Are people shocked when you tell them you're a pilot? Uh, yeah. What do they say? Really? I wonder what people expect a pilot to look like. Old and haggard. <laughs> Sometimes I say I work at Luton Airport. Mm -hmm. Then people just assume I'm a cleaner. <laughs> Honestly, what I remember, I was stood outside in my jumper a while back, and this passenger came with all the rubbish and just handed it to me, and I was like, thanks. Did you want to stop Romeo, Roger? Roger, Dodger. Back in the cabin, new girl Shanice realises one of her passengers needs some special attention. No, it shouldn't get much worse. It's going to be a little bit windy, like coming into landing, but it's nothing to worry about. It is normal. I've always been quite a nervous passenger. I just shake and start, like, crying, really. So it's just, like, nerves and this horrible feeling. It's a common problem, with one in six Brits having a fear of flying. If you need anything, just in the bathroom. No, I don't think... Are we descending now? Uh, surely, yeah. That's surely, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but yeah, no, honestly, it's nothing to worry about. It's about a tiny bit of wind. Thank you. Hello. Guess who? You on a wee-wee? Yeah. I'm coming now. Thank you. <laughs> Cabin manager John joins Captain Zoe in the cockpit as regulations dictate two crew members must be present at all times, enabling Steph to take a break. You remember your first takeoff and your first landing? Yeah. I can just remember everything being really fast and me like really trying to like, you know, 
keep up, buttons. keep up with everything. Yeah. How do you remember all the buttons and stuff? It becomes so automatic. It's yeah. like you do the same things all the time. One day I'll wear them stripes. Yeah, exactly. One day you'll see One this day face. Be my yeah, I will. <laughs> First officers have two stripes on their shoulder until they reach the rank of senior first officer and get three. After that, it's four and the rank of captain. All wannabe pilots need at least five GCSEs and the mandatory 120,000 pounds. Seeing all these female pilots and that's motivating me to maybe apply for it. I don't think I'm smart enough. <laughs> oh, thanks, I'm you can say I'm smart. <laughs> but you know your free time's table. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm not smart enough. <laughs> Ten minutes to seatbelt signs, Shanice checks up on her nervy passenger. Do you want like water? Do you know what I'm talking as soon as we hit the floor, I'll be fine. EZY2211 is descending into Rome Fumicino Airport at 140 miles an hour. Steph Harris is now four hours closer to becoming a senior first officer with that extra 10 grand. <laughs> Plain turnaround time stood at an hour for nearly 50 years until the low-cost airlines slashed that to just 25 minutes. Most glamorous part of the job. This means even captains need to occasionally roll up their four-striped sleeves. We're tidying the seat pockets, making sure the safety card is at the front. So you see, that's the important thing. And we're making sure passengers haven't left their own personal possessions on board. While their wannabe senior first officers check under the bonnet to make sure all is shipshape for the return flight back to Luton. Back in the training cockpit above southern France, the cadets are getting behind the controls of a real Airbus, a.k.a. the Beast, for the first time. Today, they're being assessed on their touchdown landings and takeoffs. Failure will mean a trip back to the flight simulator. Next up for training captains James and safety first officer Christian is the only woman on board, 22-year-old Charlotte. Do you have control? I have control. She worked at a supermarket and took out a loan to pay for her training. Feeling all right? Yes, I thought. <laughs> Haven't smacked it into the ground, so that's, that's good. You will, one day. <laughs> Don't worry. Oh, it will yes. be a day when you smack coming. it. This is Charlotte's first ever landing in a 70-ton Airbus, and she's spotted a potential problem. Oh, wait, birds. Yeah, they're a bit annoying, aren't they? Bird strikes are most common at low altitude, exactly where the cadets are spending most of their time today. They make me a bit nervous. It's all right, they'll come by yourself, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. There is that. For the 8,000 flights that take off and land every day from the UK, Bird strikes are the biggest hazard. Oh, checklist. Checklist coming. Secure for landing. Auto thrust. Speed. Going ash, Jude. 1800 set. They can cause serious engine damage and on takeoff can force planes to make an emergency landing. But surprisingly, pilots are taught not to avoid them, particularly when coming in to land, as sudden changes to the flight path can be even more dangerous. Birds, go away. Oh, God. Charlotte correctly positions the plane for landing. She now needs to remember her training and ignore the birds. Gear down. Gear down. Come on, keep hold that centre line. Nothing too drastic. Small movements. Oh, that centre line. A little bit left. But she can't fight her instinct to avoid them and banks sharply to the right. Stable. Four, 30. 
retard. Retard, by the way, is an instruction to pull the throttle back and slow down. Charlotte lands way off the center line. She just manages to get back on course to take off successfully. Do you like animals? <laughs> you can't avoid the birds. <laughs> They'll avoid you. You can't go flying off to the right to avoid the birds, Charlotte. I didn't even realize I'd done that until afterwards. I was like, no, what have I done? I've ruined the whole approach. <laughs> now, apparently, women can multitask. So, <laughs> laterally <not> yet. <laughs> and vertically, you've got to keep hold of both of them, right? Yeah, that was not good. So, constantly thinking, what am I missing? What am I missing? You're doing really well. Don't overthink it. Just go with what you're seeing. Trust in it. Just do what you've been taught. Okay. She has one more chance to make up for her mistake. Stable. Or it's back to the simulator. She nails her last attempt, and training Captain James is impressed. Charlotte is now one step nearer to membership of this predominantly male club. That was bloody perfect, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Much better than the last one. Charlotte, did you do that last landing? Looked perfect. Charlotte, you did very well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Well I enjoyed that a lot. It's the first time a woman said that to him. <laughs> well done, Charlotte. You did do great. <laughs> a beast of a lover, I hear. More than a little flustered, James needs to pull himself together before the next student's up. Takeoff's confirmed. Runway 36, full length. Back in the south of France, the training captains and their rookie pilots are about to return home to Blighty. 100 knots. There's just one student left in the hot seat next to Captain James. Gear up? Gear up. Very nice. How's it feel? Pretty good. Seems better, Rob. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, right. <laughs> Enjoy South of France, mate. Only two weeks ago, 24-year-old Jonathan was in the classroom facing the hardest exam of his life. You will learn this from memory in 10 days. All right, no pressure. <laughs> the test is called type rating in pilot lingo because it's about learning everything about the type of plane they'll be flying, the Airbus. This is the uh, electrical system of the Airbus. I'm trying to do it from memory, see how much I can still remember. He passes the exam with flying colours. Jonathan, 99.31. Oh! oh. <laughs> oh well, well, nice. well yeah, done. Good. Well Thank done. you very much. Good on you. Now Jonathan needs to put the theory into practice. Runway, runway track and gear down. Gear down. That's nice. There's the runway. Happy with where it is? Yep. Good. Good. Hold that attitude there. Feel that close rate. That's perfect. It's going to sit down nicely. Good. My first hits. Rotate. Positive climb. Gear up. Gear up. Awesome. Your awesomeness is inversely proportional to how much I talk. <laughs> Did I talk much? No. <laughs> You're awesome. <laughs> really good. Top of the class on paper, and now Top Gun in the air. Jonathan, well done, buddy. Did you enjoy that? I did. You were great. What Even top you? training Captain Chris is impressed. It felt all right in the Yeah, chattered. Uh, I'm, I'm bit my tongue off. I am hurt my neck. It's going well. With all the other cadets making the grade, it's time to head home to Gatwick. I better strap in then. 
They should be in for a smooth flight with Captain James Goring and First Officer Christian De Silva taking the controls. Right. Yeah, you? Yeah, good. Seasoned pro James wants to show his rookies and Chief Captain Chris how it's done. Right Would you mind if I landed it? Would you yeah, object? No, yeah, no, of course Recent yeah. Recency, just to... <laughs> Has it been that long? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. When was the last flight? Uh, oh, only about two weeks ago. But... Raider Hilly. That sounds good to me. With the sunny, settled weather of southern France far behind them, they're descending into the cloudy grey of Gatwick. Welcome home, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That annoying Gatwick wind. <laughs> turbulent. I'm glad you're doing the landing. <laughs> Despite the conditions, James knows he must land in a specific area of the runway called the touchdown zone, or he'll risk running out of tarmac. Get up, please. Yeah, Stay with that porridge. <laughs> 50, 40, 30, 20. Retard, retard. Oh, oh I find it. Retard. <laughs> yeah, I can hear him laugh. <laughs> Captain James trains other captains, but today he nearly missed the touchdown zone. It seems things didn't go according to plan. That's a pilot ship. <laughs> it was in Fuck the touchdown yeah, zone. Just. And mistakes never go unnoticed inside the cockpit. Uh, I think Chris might have something to say there. Oh, James! Go cool, on, get over and done with. No, 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 no. What, what do you mean? I was gonna say You're not that good, mate. <laughs> she said, oh, hello. Come back up. <laughs> <laughs> Before EasyJet cadets are allowed anywhere near an Airbus, they spend a few weeks at L3 Airline Academy's Bournemouth base. Morning! Flight instructors here teach cadets how to deal with the most life-threatening scenarios any pilot can face. From flying blind in poor visibility, complete engine failure, and experiencing G-force if the plane loses total control. It's going to just show you how we recover from extreme maneuvers, something that you're not going to encounter again when you're doing your Airbus flying, I hope. At least the passengers <laughs> hope. <laughs> Maybe the aircraft suddenly finds itself on its back. The trainee has got to be taught what to do in those circumstances. How do you recover when you're upside down? Something you don't expect and hopefully you'll never uh, expect and, and hopefully be able to respond before you get to that situation. 26-year-old Sophie Truran is now 12 months into her two-year training and has just returned from New Zealand, having nailed flying on her own with only a map. This is the final stomach-churning challenge before she starts her Airbus training. Incidents like the ones they're preparing for are extremely rare, but if they do happen, it's essential the pilot keeps a cool head. Today, Sophie will have to endure dramatic turns and stalls in mid-air to recreate a disastrous loss of control. Are you going to feel sick, do you think? I feel sick during stalling and steep turns, so yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I always make funny noises when I'm about to feel ill. I'm like, oh, oh I'll yeah. start squeaking, going, <laughs> 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 To avoid air sickness, Sophie is keen to employ a trick she learned at flight school in New Zealand. So did Ed take ginger in New Zealand? I think he did, and then I've heard of other cadets taking it too. What, and it helped with the air sickness? Yeah, slightly. People have different ways of managing air sickness, and I've heard rumours that ginger helps with any nausea you might feel if you consume ginger before. So they have settled for some ginger biscuits. Sophie will be flying in a plane they affectionately call... There's the Vomit Comet itself. Yes, you heard right, the Vomit Comet. What if I throw up? I might take a sick bag. <laughs> Do you want a sick bag? Instructor Cliff Rand, who's been taking people upside down for three years, has his own strategy to avoid air sickness, but he's keeping it to himself. It's gonna be awesome. It's a beautiful day. I'm not finished this part of the world.
Up here, Cliff will put Sophie through her paces. He'll be subjecting her to G-force. Pilots need to be able to cope with up to four Gs. That's the same force you experience on the Nemesis ride at Alton Towers. It's the most expensive fairground ride they've ever had. <laughs> your body weighs four times its normal weight, forcing the blood to pool in your feet and putting so much pressure on your neck that you will struggle to hold your head up. This is okay on a roller coaster, but if you're in control of an aircraft, one wrong movement or decision can mean the difference between life and death, and not just yours. Okay, so just try and demonstrate for you what a sustained turn at 2.5G feels like. <laughs> okay. okay, here we go. That's what two and a half G feels like. Okay. I feel like if you did that in, in, in your aircraft, you'd, you'd notice. Next, Cliff confronts Sophie with a pilot's worst nightmare, a stall. We're going fully to the stalls. He switches the engine off, and the aircraft begins to plummet towards the ground. Okay. There's the most model. <laughs> Passenger planes almost never stall. But when they do, it's crucial a pilot knows exactly how to manage this potentially fatal situation. As she falls from 3,000 feet, Sophie has to battle to regain control of the aircraft. He's out of the descent. Need some more power in. By accelerating out of the dive. Need some more power in. Need to go. Need to go. Need to go. Great. Nose. Touching on. The ginger has served her well, but can it last a 360 degree roll? Just brace your tummy, and then we'll look left to right and then over the back of your head as we're inserted. Okay, okay here we go. the back pressure going over the top. but it was really good. Did all the manoeuvres and some stalling. Woo! But um, after that, you know, you know what to expect, and it's really good. I feel, I feel a lot more confident now than I did before I, before I left in that plane. So, it's a good day. <laughs> Having survived the vomit comet, next up for Sophie is the beast, the Airbus. EZY6794 is about to return home to Belfast from Faro in Portugal's Algarve. At the helm is 24-year-old Jonathan Bruva. So we have flat one, uh, runway two, one zero. Fresh from flight school, it's the A-star student's first time at the controls of a jet with passengers on board. So final block is 996. That's it. Captain Barry Russell is sitting alongside, overseeing the trainee first officer. Very good afternoon from the flight deck, ladies and gentlemen. Well, welcome aboard this easy jet service this morning for Belfast. Senior first officer Colin Lavin is ready to step in if Jonathan gets into difficulties. Probably one of the most nervous 
things I've done, it is one of the things I've most been looking forward to. Flight controls. Check. Check briefing. Confirm. Flap setting. Uh, what? Uh, flap one? Config one. Two, one. Yeah. The important thing is to relax and enjoy it. Yeah. It's your first takeoff with 150 passengers. Okay. Hey. Okay. Ready? Yes. Okay, take off. Thrust set. 100 knots. Set. V1, rotate. How was that? Yeah. Was fun? Yeah. Just lost the centre line of the runway at the, at the end. Yeah, but you brought it back. Jonathan left his English mum and Dutch dad in Holland to be posted to Belfast, where he's living on his own for the first time. This is home, yes. It is now. I've put my suitcase and my jacket in here. Oh, don't worry. It's a bit of a mess on there, but... I mean, I haven't got any more than that. Not a lot, is it? <laughs> All my family and my parents, they're probably more worried about me cleaning and cooking and washing than that they are me flying. He may have excelled in the classroom, but there are some other on-the-job skills he has to master, like the all-important passenger announcement. So, do you want to think about a PA, perhaps? Okay. I've told them a little bit about the route. You could turn around and say, you know, our cruise altitude. So we're cruising at 33,000 feet over the Bay of Biscay. Over what? Bay of Biscay. Never heard. Bay. Come on, Jonathan. Bay of Biscay? The stretch of water between northeastern Spain and France. Do you not know your geography? I never did geography. <laughs> OK, you're over the Atlantic Ocean then. <laughs> the passenger announcement can be nerve-wracking for any novice, especially if you don't know where you are. But Captain Barry has some helpful hints. This is what you don't do. The weather in Belfast <laughs> is 310 at 12 knots, <laughs> temperature 11, 2.6, QNH 1029. So it's a northwesterly breeze, few clouds, 11 degrees. But you could say high pressure if you want. So it's up to yourself. You still want to keep one ear on. Yeah. Because, and then you can just press the button and talk into it. Right, so do you want to go and have a chat with him? I'll yeah. take control. Okay, you control. Okay. This, this button here. Yes. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, this is your first officer speaking. Uh, just a quick update from the flight deck. We're currently just south of Ireland. It's at 33,000 feet. Um, the expected time is five minutes past five. Is that not a female? That's not female. That's not female. Was oh, it a female? No. no? Yeah. Certainly, it's very young. Yeah. Thank you for choosing to fly with EasyJet and uh, we wish you a pleasant onward journey. With the announcement safely negotiated, it's time for another cockpit lesson, this time in Captain Comfort Food. Do you ever have a banana sandwich? Oh, is that, is that just weird? I was going to shake my head. <laughs> What's like, wrong with a banana oh, sandwich? <laughs> no, no. That and chip buddies. I never had a chip buddy, but then. Do you like chip buddies? A what? A chip um, buddy. You know chips, like uh, fries? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they put them in sandwiches. In sandwiches? Yeah. Delicious. <laughs> 150 miles from Belfast, it's time for Jonathan to start his first descent. Delta, four zero miles to flight level six zero. Flight level six zero blue. Checks. Heading one zero one five.
In the flight deck, as the runway comes into view, Jonathan struggles to keep a level approach. Hundred above. The pressure is on. But a quick correction, and he's back on the runway's center line. Very nice. Air first. Landing the 320 full of passengers. Yep. Well, how'd that feel? Yeah, good. A very good first day out, Jonathan. I enjoyed it. Good. That's half the battle. <laughs> I thought that was a great landing, so it is. Very good. You wouldn't know it was his first time, I'm sure you wouldn't. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Why? You're extremely young looking. <laughs> yeah, I know you. I trust you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye. It's not a good first day. It was good then. Really good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot of the guys we're getting through now are really, really good. Okay. Really switched on. Really good. Really good. Can't wait till tomorrow to <laughs> the next one. It's great to finally get started. They call that work. <laughs> this has been my focus ever since I was little, and it always will be my focus. It's just you're on top of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for choosing to fly with EasyJet, and uh, we wish you a pleasant onward journey. Thank you. Davina and Nikki are back with more heartwarming reunions in new long lost family Wednesday night at 9, and Cold War drama The Americans is starting in just a few minutes over on ITV Encore. <laughs>